Can carotene shrimp be kept in tap water? I get asked this question at least twice a week and the answer is no. Thank you so much for watching. I will see all of you next week. Bye. If only people were happy with that answer. But before we start, I just want to say thank you so much to this week's sponsor, My Tank Life. For those of you who don't know, My Tank Life is a marketplace for multiple vendors in the exotic and aquarium hobby. So instead of searching endlessly on Google, you can head over to My Tank Life and find pretty much everything you're looking for in one place. They also have a decent selection of Neo Caridina and Caridina shrimp to choose from, so be sure to check it out. Thanks again to My Tank Life for sponsoring this video and thank you so much to each and every one of you watching. Without you watching, I would not have opportunities like this. Now let's get into it. So the short answer might be no, but let me explain. People who get into the shrimp hobby and are able to keep neo caridina shrimp successfully in tap water always want to switch over to caridina as soon as possible. Caridina are a lot more beautiful than neo caridina, but what people fail to understand is they are also a lot more sensitive. I've gone into detail on the parameters these shrimp require in my previous video, so if you haven't checked that out yet, please go watch it after finishing this one. I will put a link at the top. Most people actually have no idea what GH and KH are and how it affects shrimp, so I'm going to give you a crash course. GH stands for general hardness. GH actually measures magnesium and calcium in your water. KH, on the other hand, stands for carbonate hardness and measures the carbonates and bicarbonates in your water. This directly affects your water's buffering capacity. So if you're adding shrimp minerals to the water that only affect GH, like in the case with caridina, you are essentially adding magnesium and calcium to the water. While neocaridina can do just fine in water with a higher KH, caridina need a KH of 0 to 1, which is not possible to achieve with your general tap water. Neocaridina have a wide range of acceptable parameters when it comes to their pH, GH and KH. They actually prefer harder water, which just means the water contains more minerals. This is why dechlorinated tap water, which tends to be harder water, is perfectly fine for neos in most cases. Caridina, on the other hand, prefers softer water, which is almost impossible to achieve with tap water. Contrary to popular belief, all tap water is not made equally. There are so many minerals added to tap water to make it drinkable that it becomes a problem. Another major problem is, tap water isn't regulated. Certain times of the week and year, it will contain more minerals and additives than other times, which makes it extremely risky to rely on for sensitive animals. If you're going to be spending a fortune on caridina shrimp, why would you jeopardize it by keeping them in unstable conditions? Over the years, I've heard of more and more people losing fish and shrimp due to fluctuations in tap water quality in their area. For this reason, I avoid tap water altogether for my fish and shrimp. RO, or reverse osmosis water, is water that has been purified to remove almost all contaminants, minerals and salts in the water. Doing this will also give you a more acidic pH, which is preferred by caridina shrimp. This process will also give you a TDS of close to zero, which makes it so much easier to mix the correct amount of shrimp minerals into the water in order to give you the desired GH and KH. If you don't have an RO unit at home, it's not the end of the world. You will actually be able to buy RO water from most aquatic stores or big shrimp breeders in your area. If you are planning to go the RO route, remember that you must add minerals to the water. Otherwise, it will also be dangerous for your shrimp. If you want to read up more about RO water and shrimp minerals, please check out Shrimp Nation's Knowledge Center, where these topics are discussed in detail. I will post a link in the description box of this video. TDS stands for Total Dissolved Solids. This measures the total concentration of dissolved substances in water in parts per million, but you have no idea what these substances comprise of. These can be anything from sodium, chlorides and potassium to copper, ammonia and nitrates. You simply have no idea of knowing. Generally, tap water is good for drinking when the TDS is between 50 and 150 parts per million. Water with a TDS above 1000 parts per million is considered dangerous for human consumption. 
Your tap water might have a TDS of 60, which seems low enough, but you have no idea what that consists of or how it'll affect your shrimp. It is a massive gamble, and not only are you risking the lives of these creatures, but you'll also end up spending a lot more money in the long run trying to successfully keep them alive. You're making life much more difficult for yourself than it has to be. I've received messages from people who are so worried because they put minerals in their RO water, but they don't get the TDS reading that the guy on YouTube got when he added minerals. This is really important, so listen up. Forget about the ideal TDS. You are going to focus on your water's GH. If you want to achieve a GH of 6 for the bucket of RO water you're adding to the tank, you are going to mix the shrimp minerals according to the instructions. After properly mixing the water, you are going to taste the GH. If the GH is lower than 6, you are going to add slightly more minerals and keep testing until you have the desired reading. Once you do, now is the time you are going to measure the TDS of your water. Let's say your TDS is 125. Write it down. Next time you mix water, instead of constantly checking your GH, you can measure the water with your TDS pen until you have a TDS of 125. This should equal a GH of 6 in your case. But this will not be the same for everyone else because Billy on YouTube is most likely using different minerals than you are. And he's also likely in a different part of the world with different water. So if anyone tells you you need a TDS of whatever number, they are wrong and you should ignore their advice. You are aiming for a specific GH, not a specific TDS reading. I hope that clears it up and makes it a little easier to understand why you should not use tap water with Caradina shrimp. If you know of anyone that needs to see this video, then please share it with them. And thank you so much to My Tank Life for sponsoring this week's video. If you feel that you're ready for Caradina shrimp, then head on over to My Tank Life and browse through their wide selection of Caradina shrimp. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to turn on the notifications so you don't miss out on any future videos. I would also really appreciate it if you could like this video so I know to make more videos like this in the future. Until next time, bye.